So I'd like to um, bring up Dr. Michael Gaiman, who's been with me from the beginning, and he's going to go through our, our portfolio. So thank you very much. I'll see you at the end for a minute. Good morning. Thank you very much, Victoria, and thank you all for being here today and, and your interest in the Guthrie Jackson Foundation and its mission to solve an MO. As you just heard, uh, neuromyelitis optica, an MO, is uh, a, an inflammatory condition of the central nervous system. Uh, it was originally termed Devick's disease in uh, 1894 by Devick and Galt. And the basics of the pathology underlying the disease um, were known to a certain extent um, in a very thin sort of veil of, of knowledge uh, over the past hundred years or so. But as we hope to share with you this morning, it's just been in the last two years that there has been an explosion in understanding this disease. And that has been driven by the Guthrie Jackson Foundation. Traditionally, NMO was viewed as a variant of multiple sclerosis. Uh, in 2004, as you heard from Dr. Van der Linden and the Mayo Group at Rochester, uh, there was a discovery of an antibody that was specific to NMO. This antibody differentiated NMO from other autoimmune diseases. The antibody targets a molecule called aquaporin-4. It's a water channel that allows water to pass through cells in a way that prevents edema. The antibody targets that molecule and injures the cells that express it. In doing so, that process sets forth uh, a, a cascade of inflammation, beginning first with astrocytes that, when injured, release other molecules that signal and injure downstream cells. Those cells then um, amplify the process and send off their own signals, and the process goes on. Ultimately, molecular signals bring in cells, including, as we now know, neutrophils and other granulocytes into the central nervous system. They, in turn, release their own inflammatory markers. Ultimately, this is an inflammatory onset disease with demyelination that follows. The primary sites, as you've heard, are the optic nerves and spinal cord. What we'd like to share with you this morning is the vision that Victoria and Bill have brought forward in looking at this disease in new ways in an attempt to not only treat the condition but ultimately find a cure. As it stands today, even in the last two years, we've been able to fund researchers who have now clearly differentiated NMO from a close relative multiple sclerosis. However, an important thing to remember is that NMO, multiple sclerosis, myasthenia gravis, lupus, Graves' disease and other autoimmune diseases are all limbs of the same autoimmune disease tree. And that tree has a trunk that is based on loss of immune tolerance to self. And I'll come back to that point because ultimately identifying the upstream causes of the immune system recognizing self as foreign is where the cures lie. Just over two years ago, the foundation formed and developed a strategic plan. And that plan focused on a set of first principles that are reviewed here. First, to sharply focus on NMO, but never be narrow-sighted. We can learn as much about NMO by understanding how it relates to other diseases as we can focusing it on it alone. And in turn, we believe that we can open doors to other autoimmune diseases by solving NMO. Second, in science today, there is a huge capability of generating volumes and volumes of data. We recognize that, we appreciate that, but we also appreciate the difference between wisdom and data. We want to 
recognize the data, but implement the wisdom, the most meaningful distillation of the data, and apply it to treatments and eventual cures. We want to do this in a way that we use what we learn as fast as we learn it, but never in a reckless way, never in a rushed way. We always follow the scientific process where information drives new discoveries. In doing so, as Victoria emphasized, we try to responsibly forge collaboration, bringing multiple expertise, multiple interests together for a common goal. And that goal is to constantly advance from test tube to treatment. In doing so, we've tried to create a process that continuously integrates momentum from multiple facets. The first of which was to identify the fundamental mechanisms by which the immune system causes this disease. Next, to take discoveries from that process and identify biomarkers of disease that then can become targets of therapy. Next, to move those targets into the most relevant animal models in which we can test new drugs. This translational approach constantly moves toward the bottom line, which is to directly benefit patients with NMO and related diseases. To achieve these goals, resources must align with priorities. Just a couple of years ago, when we first began, the portfolio of research focused mostly on basic science. Last year, there was about 50% focus on in vitro basic science. However, exciting discoveries from that work have allowed us to move into a, a position where we're focusing more and more on patient samples, animal models in living systems, preclinical studies, and we even have a couple of clinical studies in progress now. Next year, we'll continue to move forward, always focusing more and more on directly impacting and benefiting individuals with NMO. So that by this time in 2012, we plan to have over 70% of our resources focused on studies that are either in patients with NMO or directly benefit those individuals by way of clinical studies. One way of looking at this is illustrated in the following sequence of slides. And the question is, how do we turn mystery into discovery and discovery into therapy? One way to do that is to consider the process of science. Any effective science works in a way that combines careful experimentation with innovative observation. And what we've tried to, to show in this slide is that through the process of studies funded by the foundation, observations connected in new ways become discoveries. And as you can see across the bottom of this slide, just two years ago, it was known that aquaporin-4 and antibody were involved in NMO. However, what was less clear was the role of complement and the, 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 the consequences of complement fixation in bringing inflammatory cells into the milieu. T cells were considered in NMO, as in many autoimmune diseases, but as an example of a recent discovery, we now believe that NMO is driven by a Th17 paradigm rather than a Th1 paradigm, as is the case with multiple sclerosis. We have discoveries that have moved from mystery onto a plane that we can work with. Now, to turn those into therapies, we have to take the next step. And that step is shown here, and that's to decipher cause and effect. If we look at these types of discoveries from this perspective, we can see that to the right uh, would be downstream effects of the disease. 
to the left upstream causes of the disease. Now, for the time being, we need to focus on the downstream targets, that is, the effects of the disease. However, we're never um, not thinking about the upstream causes, because that's ultimately where we need to be. By connecting the discovery dots in new ways, we can achieve this goal. There's another way to look at this, however, and that's the, the next step toward moving these discoveries forward. And that is comparing NMO with other autoimmune diseases. From this perspective, you can see that casting a different type of light on the discoveries reveals that many of these diseases provide a similar shadow. And it's hidden within those shadows that the commonalities of these diseases reside. And from that perspective, by solving NMO, we will also unlock new doors to other autoimmune diseases. And finally, I want to leave you with this thought. First, we can't um, overstate how much we appreciate all that has been done to develop the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine. And even more importantly, we'd like to emphasize the potential for the Guthrie Jackson Foundation to work with you and others in putting the tools that are being developed under your leadership to work on this disease and other diseases. And one way to think about that in summary is to consider the idea that NMO is a cascade of events that begins upstream and ends with the effects of the disease downstream. We have to target downstream effects at the moment. Those are our near-term goals, but that buys us time to focus on the upstream causes, and it's the headwaters of cause where the cures lie, and that's where we're going. And by using ablative and non-ablative approaches to reboot the immune system, adoptive transfer and transplantation of appropriate stem cells that are now being developed, we can reverse the course of events that led to the disease and ultimately stop the process and begin again with a healthy immune system. So it's from those perspectives that we have undertaken um, this approach under the leadership and uh, really passion that Victoria and, and Bill have brought to this problem. And we, again, appreciate very much the opportunity to talk with you today, and we look forward to possibilities for working with you uh, toward the goal of solving NMO and like 